Hi, everyone. Super excited to be here with you today to talk about Flatcar and with this hands-on tutorial. So it's pretty cool. We are not so many today. So I think if you have any questions, any use case you want to develop during the tutorial, we can discuss about it. Uh, before starting, let's see the requirements. So it would be nice if you at least you have QMU installed on your laptop. So this is one of the hard requirements to follow this tutorial because we are going to spawn instances using QMU. Uh, and we play a bit with Terraform after that. But uh, yeah, really QMU is main dependency. So please raise your hand if you have QMU on your laptop just to see how many folks. OK, no one has QMU. It's not uh, too bad if you don't have it, because I have some uh, recorded uh, screencast demonstrations, so I will play it for you. And like, so you can just follow the tutorial and try to, uh, to see the things working. So that's it for the requirements. So you can still install QMU while I'm starting uh, the talk. So my name is Mathieu. I work as a software engineer with Microsoft. Uh, mainly involved on Flatcar ecosystems, so I work on the related tools like Ignition or Cluster API project for the OpenStack provider. And uh, also, I'm a DevOps teacher in, in former engineering school uh, where I teach to students to use Ansible, Terraform, and stuff like that to deploy stuff in, in, in the cloud. Um, and in France, I'm involved in a couple of associations in order to promote DevOps tools, but also to organize events and uh, meetups around DevOps. So that's it for the introduction. And the goals of this tutorial is to learn a bit about Flatcar and how does it work, how to operate it, how to deploy it uh, on bare metal or in the cloud and to see about the provisioning of Ignition because it's not uh, like over operating system. You want provisioning in a regular way using Ansible or Cloud Init, but yeah, we'll see Ignition provisioning. And yeah, but the main goals to me is to give you the key elements for later be able to, to work uh, alone on Flatcar and to yeah, start uh, creating uh, awesome infrastructure. So how this tutorial is about to be structured, basically we have four hands-on, and each of these hands-on have a GitHub repository. So there is a couple of theory with the slides, then you have the practice with the GitHub repository. So the idea is for you to be able to work at home if you want to reproduce what I'm going to show you, but also to follow and doing this during uh, that time. So yeah. if. Anyone has any question at this point? OK. Yeah, if you have a question now or later, you can join the Flatcar Matrix uh, channel. So basically, this is where we discuss about everything around Flatcar. Uh, there is a discussion with the maintainers, but also the community, because Flatcar is community driven. So you can ask your question during this tutorial or later or whenever you want if you have a question about uh, how to get started with Flatcar, how to use it with, uh, I don't know, with GCP or, yeah. Every question you have in mind, you can ask it on uh, Flatcar Matrix channel, but you also have the Flatcar uh, Slack channel on the Kubernetes uh, Slack. If you want to join it, uh, to discuss with people and, yeah, get some ideas and get some feedback on your ideas. So let's get back to the presentation. Um, Flatcar, uh, anyone is already familiar with the concept of Flatcar? Please raise your hands if you heard about it. I think if you hear, you already heard about Flatcar. So briefly, Flatcar is a fork of CoreOS back in the days before uh, CoreOS becomes Fedora CoreOS. So it has been forked and Flatcar now is the way to go if you want to uh, deploy containers in the cloud. So Flatcar is based on Gen2 Linux. It's an operating system. Uh, that you can use to deploy container workloads. By container workloads, it means uh, can be a simple Docker container, but it, it can also be uh, a massive infrastructure with uh, Kubernetes nodes, and yeah, everything is deployed on it. So most of the time, Flatcar is being used to run Kubernetes cluster, but you can use it to deploy your simple Nginx container if you want to. It's perfectly fine. Um, there is a a key, key concept with Flatcar that it's interesting to understand. First of all, it's uh, auto-update. So it means once you deploy 
your flat car instance, it's about to be updated automatically. So if you have a big infrastructure with many nodes, you don't need to think about update, update them because they're going to be automatically updated. So this is pretty interesting if you're concerned about getting new uh, CVE patches, security, or new feature or stuff like that, you can just forget about Flatcar in your infrastructure because it's going to auto-update by themselves. Um, Flatcar is a community-driven and open source uh, operating system, which means there is no uh, decision from the top, it's from the community, so each time uh, uh, someone from the community wants a new feature, wants a package uh, to be added to Flatcar, just raise an issue on GitHub or discuss on Slack or matrix channel, and yeah, we, we can discuss about it, and if there is some traction on, the, on this request, we can just implement it into Flatcar. Um, Flatcar has uh, some key elements regarding the, the, the security. For example, the slash USR is in read-only mode, so it means you can write something into slash USR. It's read-only, it's modded at it, and there is a DMV retry when we start the instance, so you kind of pretty sure that there is no uh, modification on slash reacer before mounting it. And there is AB partitioning. So when you have a deploy flat car instance and you have an update, the update will be right in the B partition. And when the instance is about to reboot, the B partition becomes the active partition. So like so, you always have two partitions uh, with the flat car image on it and you can switch from one to the other. So it allows you to have a auto rollback if there is an issue with the update. But yeah, we'll see that too, uh, later with, uh, with, uh, with the hands-on. And there is no package manager with Flatcar. So this is something quite disturbing for an operating system to not have any package manager. So once you SSH into the instance, you can't just run IPT update or uh, emerge or something or DNF or whatever. There is no package manager at all. So the idea is to uh, bring the responsibility of installing packages to the flat car maintainers and not to you. And for thanks to this, you avoid to drift from the flat car release and to install your own package and stuff like that. So if you want to really install your own packages, you have some mechanism like systemd sysext, the new feature of systemd, which allows you to mount slash usr or slash opt um, into uh, the operating system, but you can also extend it with the Flatcar SDK, so there is a way to build Flatcar. So, yeah, no package manager, so this is something the most confusing for folks who start with Flatcar or container Linux, and there is no package manager. Okay, so let's see the, the first hands-on. So it's a discovery one. The idea is to get familiar with Flatcar and just to, to spawn a single instance on QMU on your laptop and run Nginx Docker container with it. So Flatcar is designed to run containers, so there is already Docker and everything installed on the, on the instance, so there is really no need to configure anything. You just start the instance, connect to it, and run your, your Docker command if you want. If you have any question at this point, okay. So I'm going to run it for you. And, okay. So everything is available on GitHub repository if you want to uh, do this later. But. So the idea is to first uh, download Flatcar images using wget. Uh, from the release server, so you get the QMU image and uh, you are everything on track. Wait a minute, I have an issue with my... Okay. So you download, yeah, you double, you get the QMU image from the release server. So it takes a bit of time, it's uh, only a couple of minutes uh, if you have a good, uh, good network provider. And once it's done, you just unzip the image from the, from the server and you are ready to go uh, to, crea to create your QMU instance. Okay, 
So now the instance is starting, so you can see Flatcar booting live on your computer, and you can see that there is no package manager at all, so I just connected on the Flatcar instance, so regular Linux system, but yeah, no package manager, so uh, pretty confusing. <laughs> and now I can just run Nginx container just for the proof of concept, and that's it, nothing to do. Already is installed, nothing to uh, to provision like with Ansible on Ubuntu or Debian, you need to yeah install Docker and all required stuff, and yeah that's it. I have uh, Nginx working fine uh, on 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 Flatcar. So this is really the, the 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 simplest way to get started with the operating system to develop stuff on your own. You just get QMU image from the release server, and you have a, a helper script that allows you to run things. And you can yeah play with it, uh, install stuff, and break stuff. Uh, I mean yeah, this is the most simple way to do. And that's it. So yeah, if I get back to the slide, let's talk about provisioning now. So this is nice, nice. We have a discovery hands-on. We just started a QMU instance of Flatcar, and I run Docker container on it. Now I want to bring some automation around it, because if I want to deploy this in the cloud with many thousands of Flatcar instances, I don't want to SSH into each of these instances to run uh, Nginx container. So how can I provision the instance? You could use Ansible, yes. But uh, by default, there is no uh, Python environment <laughs> into Flatcar. So, the idea is to use Ignition, and Ignition is developed by CoreOS, uh, Red Hat. It's open source uh, provisioning software. It's a uh, binary wrote in Go. And there is a couple of things to know about Ignition that are pretty interesting to know as a provisioning tool. It's, uh, it runs from the init RAM file system, so it's really early in the boot of the, of the, of the, of the instance. It runs uh, once, so if the provisioning has correctly been done, it won't run anymore. So this is not like Cloud Init. Cloud Init is going to run almost at each boot of the instance. Ignition, if everything has been fine, it just don't run any, any, uh, anymore. And with Ignition, it's all or nothing. So if you have an issue with your provisioning, the instance won't boot. It just fail to boot, and you will land into emergency target of a boot uh, uh, phase. Uh, so yeah, you won't get a half provisioning instance. The idea is to get all or nothing. So if you have an issue with your provisioning, it just fails. Uh, but at least if it works, it means that your provisioning has been correctly done and you can, be, you can trust him. Um, ignition is declarative, so you define a state that you want to reach. It's a JSON configuration, and in this JSON, you define a state you want to reach, and that's it. You can't have dynamic conditions. If I'm running on flat color version, something, something, do something else. So the idea is to reach a state. So you define files you want to be here in the system. You define a systemd units that you want to be created during the provisioning that want to be enabled. So the final state of the instance you want to reach, you define it with ignition. And finally, it's generated configuration. So um, the idea is to not write JSON because no one likes to write JSON. Uh, uh, YAML is a bit better to write. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the idea with Ignition is to generate that configuration. So you write uh, using butane, for example, which is a, a format to write uh, butane configuration that can be used to transpile and used to, to, to work with Ignition. So there's a bunch of new terms. This is quite interesting, but uh, yeah, you start to get familiar with Ignition. What is it? Now we can see we don't see anything, so I will skip this. But now let's skip to the hands-on number two. So how to do exactly the same thing we've done in the hands-on one, except that now we're going to use Ignition. Let's see that. So if I'm going to And then two, there is a readme, there is a config.yml, and there is uh, the demo. So I'm going to zoom in. So this is a, a configuration file in YAML. 
So it's not JSON configuration as we mentioned uh, with Ignition. So as I said, we are going to define a state we want to reach using that Butane configuration, and then we're going to transpile to generate Ignition configuration. Then when you're going to start the, the flat car instances, we will give, we will pass that Ignition configuration. But first, let's define which state we want to reach. So for example, I want to have Nginx service up and running. So Nginx service is going to simply run Docker, image, Nginx, uh, something, something, well, any, anything you need to, to, to get to, to run Nginx. And uh, it's going to be enabled. So you can see there is this enabled key uh, here. So it basically means uh, create a symlink. So when the flat current instance is going to boot, it's going to enable the Nginx service, and I will get everything up and running. Now, I want to create a file. I want to display Hello World. So I'm going to create a file. So you can check the documentation. And I'm going to try to do it without the documentation. <laughs> so the idea is to define files. And we want to be that files to be in slash opt slash, um, no, in well, w index.html. So really static files. We want some content. And that should be it. So this is our beautiful website. <laughs> uh, the idea is to just show, I know, Open Source Summit North America. But uh, if we try to see what's going on, we want a file to be into slash var slash www slash index.html. And we can see that this folder is about to be shared with the Nginx container here. So if everything works fine, we should get our uh, Nginx serving this index.html web, web, web page. So I'm going to save it, and I'm going to transpile it. So as I said, I need to transpile my YAML file to Ignition configuration. So this should work. And if I check now my Ignition configuration, I have almost the same content, except that it's forwarded to JSON. And you can see that you have some pretty nice stuff like this data formatting. Uh, data format, so like so you avoid everything like uh, escaping characters, issues, and stuff like that. And you can see that all my systemd unit has been stringified, so it's really convenient because I don't want to write this by hand. But uh, now I have everything to 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 start my flat car instance. So if I'm going to show the the demo. I'm going to play it. So this is basically what we've done. The transpiling step. So this is just what I've shown you. And now I'm going to start the flat car instance. And you see there is a flag, dash E, config.json. And now we have the flat car that is up and running, booting. And if we check, we have a, this Nginx service that has been created. It's up and running because we spe specifically asked to enable it at boot. So we can check the content is the one we defined in the config.json. We can see that there is my content in var index.html. And finally, we can check the, the logs of the unit. And you can see it's, it's downloading the Nginx image. And OK, I have my Nginx up and running and serving that web page we just created. So this is just a simple way to bring some automation around Flatcar. So we just pass uh, Ignition file, and Ignition, we, we define the state we want to reach. Any question at this point about Ignition? Yeah? Can it work with uh, local repositories, right? For example, uh, I want to run it on CNCD, like Times per day, right? And, and I don't want to get uh, 
Oh, you, oh okay, I see what you mean. Uh, since um, you're going to use Docker, in the end, you can specific your, uh, define your registry configuration into slash etc, slash docker, slash configs on JSON, and you can define this through ignition. So when each time a flat car instance is about to boot, it's going to get that config.json. OK, I have to write a file in slash etc slash docker config.json to define that specific registry, and that's it. Each time it will pull uh, Nginx, it will pull from your registry and not from the public one. Another question? Uh, sorry, for people in the stream, the question was, uh, is there any way to specify a registry through ignition? So it's nice. It works locally with QMU and stuff like that. But uh, what about five minutes back? That should be right. Okay, it, it's run locally. But what about the cloud? We want to run it everything on uh, I don't know on Google or AWS or stuff like that. Well, Flatcar provides images for a really bunch of platforms. So you can have the, the bare metal, I would say, uh, and but also virtualization, background virtual box, public cloud, AWS, Azure, GCP, Equinix, Metal, OpenStack, well, everything you, you can think about it. And also some community stuff. So the Vulture, Rexpace, Exoscales, it's community supported platforms. So it means we don't run CI testing against those platforms, but we do know that someone from the community did some tests and wrote some documentation about it. It's available, but we don't test it before uh, sending a new release of Flatcar. But AWS, Azure, GCP, Equinix, Metal, OpenStack are covered in the CI. So each time there is a new Flatcar release, which means every two weeks, uh, we ensure that every test are passing on this platform. So, if you want to do exactly what we've done with the Nginx uh, proof of concept thing on Azure or GCP or whatever, it will work as long as the cloud provider supports uh, cloud da um, user data. So this is a screenshot from user from Azure, and you can see you can specify user data when you create an instance. Um, so in this spe uh, specific field, you're going to pass the ignition configuration in it. So Ignition has a mechanism to know on which cloud provider he's running and is going to fetch uh, the metadata from the IMDS, so Azure, GCP, AWS, all these cloud providers has this IMDS service, which is a metadata service, and Ignition configuration is going to be uh, provided by the user on the user data fields on this cl pro cloud provider, and Ignition is going to fetch it when the instance boots. So it will be exactly the same thing as Flatcar with QMU, except you know in the cloud. So this is the same thing with GCP, for example. You provide the user data, and then you paste your, conf your, your, config, uh, your ignition configuration. So it means once you have defined your ignition configuration, you don't need to rewrite it for each cloud provider or stuff like that. It just, you just send it to the cloud provider through the metadata service. So now it's the, 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 the third hands-on. So the idea is to use Terraform. Uh, I hope everyone is uh, familiar with Terraform. Terraform is a way to define and to provision infrastructure using infrastructure as code. So you will define yeah, which instance you want to create using which image on which cloud provider. So for this example, I'm going to use uh, OpenStack because it was the simplest way to run things. So if someone wants to try right now with Terraform and OpenStack, I can provide some IP and credentials uh, if you want to. Otherwise, I'm just going to, to quickly show how does it work and to see. OK. So moving to hands on three. So in this folder, there is a Terraform configuration. So the idea is to give you really everything to be plug and play. So if you want to, to try at home, you can just use this, uh, this configuration, and uh, everything should work fine. So if we have a look to the, to the content, so I'm going back here. So this is the Terraform configuration of Flatcar on OpenStack, and the, the most important part 
is where we define the flat car instance. So this is, uh, I, I think you already seen some Terraform code before, so I won't go through each of these key value. But the most important is that one, the user data one, uh, because this is, oh, sorry. This is where we provide the ignition configuration. So ignition can be defined uh, with Terraform also. So you have everything in the same code base. You have, uh, you have your ignition configuration, also your deployment. And this is where you link that famous user data between the instance and between the one created by, by, uh, by Terraform. So if we have a look to this, server, to this user data, it's a data resource, CT config, machine ignition, something, something, something. And actually, it's a template file here. And if we check the content of a template, this is what we've seen earlier. So this is the Nginx service. So when you run Terraform, it's going to take that configuration, generate the ignition configuration associated to it, pass it to the user data of uh, the Flatcar instance, and then deploy everything on OpenStack. So this is the OpenStack example. Uh, one particular thing that could be interesting to see is this thing was not present earlier. So with ignition, you can also provide kernel arguments. So the instance is going to boot, it's going to check the proc command line uh, value, and if there is an argument that should be here but it's not, like this one, it's going to append it to the flatcar command line, to the proc command line, then reboot the instance, and like so you can uh, have this uh, parameter to be available. So this parameter is just to auto-login. So when the flat car instance is going to be up, you won't need to you know, pass through the authentication. You can just uh, land into a bash and do your stuff. So this is just for testing purpose. Like so on OpenStack, I don't, I don't need to provide SSH access or stuff like that. You can just reach uh, the instance. So if we check how does it work, So we're going to the Terraform folder. So this is what I've shown. I'm going to pass it. OK. OK. We've seen it too. So I'm adding back, I'm adding back this uh, index.html just for proof of concept. And that should be good. So I'm going to init. Terraform is always in three steps. Init, plan, apply. So this is where we import the plugin. And I'm going to run Terraform plan. So if we check, it's going to create this ignition configuration. So you can see it uh, clearly. And it's going to create also a bunch of stuff we don't really care, like SSH key uh, for the provisioning. and. Yeah, everything we need to create an instance. So it's quite easy. There is just instance and image to, to, to create. And I'm going to, to try, actually, if I can deploy it right now to show you. OK, okay I don't have Wi-Fi. Uh, but uh, fortunately, I have the demo. So. I'm going to run that one. And then I'm going to apply the Terraform co uh, configuration. So it's going to compare what's, going, what's being deployed on the OpenStack side and what it's actually deployed. And then it will create the resources. So this is where it creates the resources. And that's it. I've created an instance on OpenStack with this IP and with this user data. And you can also check the output anytime you want. So if you have CI be behind, you can yeah, just get the IP in, and that's it. OK, and finally, the final step of Flatcar, which is the update. This is one of the most important parts of Flatcar. As I mentioned earlier, you don't need to provide any further mechanism if you want to update a Flatcar. You don't need to think about it. Um, about the update, how does it work? When you deploy a Flatcar instance, there is uh, two uh, system that you need that's going to run for the update. The update engine 
and locksmiths. So update and join is a simple binary that's going to fetch a public update server uh, every, I don't know, it's quite random uh, for the times, but like every 20 minutes or 25 minutes is going to ping the update server, hey, is there a new flat car release, yes or no? And if there is a new flat car release, it's going to download the, the release, so it's a new image, it's going to write it to the B partition, as I mentioned in the introduction, and it's going to send a signal. So I've, done, I've downloaded a new, re, a new version of Flatcar, wrote it to the partition B, okay, I'm ready to, re, to reboot now. And Locksmith is the update agent that's going to take care of the rebooting. So you can define some strategy with Ignition where you can say, okay, reboot every, as soon as you have the update, you can reboot, or please reboot uh, each Wednesday uh, between 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. in the morning, or you can say, don't reboot at all, let me handle the things. So you can yeah, define this kind of strategies or even use uh, etcd if you have etcd bucket, clus bucket cluster uh, to, yeah, to, to, if you have a big cluster with hundreds of instances, you can say, try, try to, get, to, to get a token from the etcd cluster and if you have a token, you can reboot and once you reboot, you can release the token. So like so, you can dispatch your rebooting stuff. And yeah, so the idea is that it provides automatic way to update. So once it's deployed, you have nothing else to do uh, but uh, wait for the update. So I won't run the, the, this hands-on since uh, basically it's just show what I said, but uh, in, 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 in a terminal way. But uh, the interesting thing about Flatcar is you have uh, three release channels, so alpha, beta, and stable. So we've seen some example with stable, and when we release tables, it's every two weeks. So every two weeks, we have a new stable with the new uh, patches, uh, security patches, and CVE, CVE from the, the software installed into the operating system. So you have, uh, for example, Docker or Veeam or stuff like that, you get some security issues like each day. So every two weeks, we try to deploy a stable. Um, stable, and alpha and beta, uh, this is where new features come into the operating system. So when you have an alpha uh, with new, brand new features, the alpha is going to be promoted to beta, and after six months or stuff like that, the beta is going to be promoted to stable. So when you have a stable release, you can be pretty sure that nothing will be break with the update, because it's going to be in beta uh, for several months before, and user, uh, are using beta in cluster, so you, you can safely update. And by the way, speaking of update, you can see on the release coordination uh, channel, so this is all public, that we're going to deploy the to, to release, to, to start the release today for the next week. So yeah, you can track this uh, if you are interested to, to see how does it work, and uh, yeah, if you have questions, as I said, you can, you can try stuff. Uh, uh, you can join Matrix or Slack channel. It's too bad I don't have network earlier. I, I had network, but not, not anymore. So, well, that's life. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions, so please feel free to reach out on Matrix, uh, Slack, uh, Flatcar channel, or Kubernetes channel. And I'm here for the next uh, today and tomorrow. So if you want to, to discuss about the operating system, about Ignition, about you know, cluster API, yes, Linux, whatever, please feel free to, to ping me. Thank you.